Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Come on, you can put a praise on it right there. Come on. Hallelujah, God. Come on, come on, put a praise on it. Put a deposit of praise on it. God will perform it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I declare he will. They'll shift, they'll shift, they'll shift. They'll shift, they'll shift, they'll shift. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it. Somebody shout today. Yes, sir. Today. Okay, all right, all right. Don't push me, all right. Don't push me, don't push me. Listen, this is bonus Sunday. We, what an awesome God. We serve angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What, I, I'm in the wrong church. Let, let, me, let me talk to those online. They acted funny in here. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Listen, we're so excited. Go ahead and take a seat. For real. For real though. For real though. For real though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all standing up make me think y'all want to have church. Don't, don't nobody get up. I, That's the guest preacher over here getting happy. Listen, listen, listen. Your, your standing up make me think. You, you, it make me think that you came to have church. So go ahead and sit down. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and sit down. No, no, go ahead. Go. Frank, I said go ahead and sit down. Okay, nobody move. Nobody get hurt. Listen. We are so excited to be here on this Sunday. I'm going to tell you why, I, why I'm excited. Watch this. I'm excited because God had other options. He, 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 had, he has other options, but regardless of those options, he chose us to be here one more day. I was glad when they said unto me, it's Sunday, so let us go into the house of the Lord. And so thank you for those who came in, those who logged in, and I know that they're experiencing some technical difficulties, but somebody's going to get in at some point. Uh, but we're up and going. The geek ministry. Come on, we'll give God praise for the geek ministry. They, we, but they were at 947. Things were not working. They were trying to work. But when you got the right people in the right place, listen, come on. Thank God. I love you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. God will perform it today. And so on today, finance, y'all go help me out. Finance, will you make sure that everybody in the geek box get $100 today, please? Would you do that for me? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. She ready to start working on something else. Let me see what else is broke. She said, she said let me see what else is broke. <laughs> amen, amen. When people, listen, I, I'm telling you, you, you don't realize how important this live is. And I'm going to tell you, for those who heard it before, there is villages in Pakistan. Thank you, Evangelist Joy. Come on, we got Evangelist Joy in Pakistan. Pastor, there are villages who they need our live stream. So there are people who are interpreting our services. There are, there are families who are getting together. Watch this. They have to do it sneakingly. Y'all just missed that. Y'all missed that. They, they have to sneak and worship. Talk to but we, we get to worship freely. We get to worship freely. So I am so glad for our geek ministry who makes sure that our stream is not just to those who are in the west side. But we also got members on the west coast. And I don't know where Pakistan is, but they somewhere that's not anywhere near us. But wherever they are, east, west, middle east, yeah. Middle east, they're the west of somebody. But anyway, middle east. Thank God for them. We love you, Pakistan, and thank you for uh, allowing us to be the voice in your life. And so we are working together to see how we can uh, work closer together with our Pakistan church, New, New Kingdom. I say we got a Pakistan church. 
And so Evangelist Joy, she she been reaching out, and I, I, I and I said, I'm, I'm serious. I, could I be honest? I said, baby, uh, th there's some other churches say, no, we want you. And they said, well, we even want you to come to Pakistan. I said, well, hold on, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. L wait, just hold on. Give me, give me a few. Okay, I gotta see, I gotta see how I can walk there. Just wait, just wait. Hold on, we coming. But until then, we want to make sure we give them the best that we have in terms of our virtual opportunity. And so thank you. Just by way of a few announcements, we're going to get in and out of your way. And, uh, and so uh, most of us know, uh, if you have not heard yet, uh, the Lord decided, the Lord uh, in his infinite wisdom decided that he would just walk around heaven and pick a rose. And, and the rose that he decided to pick was one of our very own, Sheila Hargrove. And so we thank God for the life of Sheila Hargrove. He decided to call her home on yesterday. If you have, don't know her, this is a picture. Sheila sits right over here. The, Sheila Church be over here. She, you know, Sheila got her, Sheila be sitting right over there. And so she uh, had a, a two-year uh, battle fight uh, with cancer. Listen, it was amazing. Uh, 18 months ago, 18 months ago, the Lord gave her three months. And she came to pass, and I said, well, we're, we're not going to accept that. We, we're, not even gonna, we're not even going to call whatever that is, and we're just going to believe by faith. And, and so we just kept on touching and agreeing. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to probably give you some of my eulogy. This is one woman. I think I wrote six eulogies for her. Y'all, somebody will catch that later on. Okay, all right, all right. Forget it, forget it, forget it. You, you know what I'm going to I done wrote six eulogies for her. But, man, what, just, just because... God decided. He makes the decisions. And so I am so glad that we had the opportunity to share with her and, and, and God lent his angel to us. And so come on, thank God for Sheila Hargrove. Yes. We are in prayer uh, for our brother Charles as, you know, I, he's probably one of the best caretakers I ever met in my life. I said if I ever, if, if I ever get sick, call Charles to my house. Called Charles to my house. He he telling the doctors what to do and all that kind of stuff. But I said, man, you just she need to just give you the copay. So anyway, watch this. We thank God for him and for her. And then uh, also on this, at the church, at the church, uh, we need those. There's a meeting for those who are going to uh, be a part of the organ donor meeting that we're having February the seventh. And so, if you want to be a part of that, that's next Monday. Yeah. Next Monday. And so. Listen, we're getting prepared for that, and so uh, following service, we want to meet with ways and means to see how we can begin to make that happen. Any other announcements? I feel like we got about 18 of them. Okay, all right. Um, just don't forget, um, as you go shopping for your food in your house, remember, we, do have, we still have the community fridge outside. Um, now, more than ever, I'm sure people are looking for things to eat, especially if they're homeless and they're walking around at night, and they see that light on that fridge. They say, oh, I have somewhere to go to get something to eat or something to drink. So just, you know, as you go on shopping for your household, just pick up a couple extra items and just put it right out there at the fridge or in the pantry. We greatly would appreciate it. Amen. And then also we have on Mondays, Exalt Fitness. My tape been working us out. The women and men be coming out, working out every week. It has been an awesome time. So if you want to join her, it is registration required. She does have a virtual option if you don't feel safe to come out. But we do make sure we are physically distanced. But if you don't feel comfortable, she has the virtual option. So just see her after church if you want to register, okay? Amen. You said an awesome time. Listen, I would leave out of here sweating, hurting parts of my body I didn't know even existed. I'm supposed to say that? Okay, I'm just being honest. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm going to heaven empty. I'm telling everything. Listen, lastly, lastly, uh, we, we push salvation around here. We push salvation. We push Matthew 25. But along with salvation, we push education. We push education. So every fifth Sunday, it is uh, where we go and make sure that we have some money in the reserve for our scholarship to help our higher education. And so we have the, there it is, the Carolyn Jacobs Higher Education this Sunday, 
Only four people clapping. Only four people clapping. Only four people clapping. Maybe you clapping online. They acting funny in here. You online. You online. Okay, thank you. Thank you for putting that cereal down and clap your hand because they didn't do it in here. They didn't. Uh, thank you for it. And so this Sunday we are acknowledging all of those uh, who are, we, we want to continue to bless those with higher education. All right, anything else? And, we, and so with, as they would say with all the announcements, please govern yourselves according to the 15th. Oh, every first, this Tuesday, is it this Tuesday? Prayer, prayer, prayer. We got to talk about prayer. I mean, what else are you doing other than prayer if you're a believer? Come on, this Tuesday, we want to log in for prayer. Uh, it's every first Tuesday of the month we log in, and there's information right there. Take, look, take a screenshot of those of you online. If you're in the building, take a picture of that. Dial in J just for a few minutes. If there's any other announcements, just follow us online. There's too many announcements at this church. We are most Baptists. I talk, look, see you later. We got to go worship. They're, they're, they're important. I love you. I'll see you later. Let's go to worship. Praise the Lord, church. Come on. Praise the Lord. Um, got a testimony. God is so good, um, and I just can't keep it to myself. And sometimes he do things that make your heart smile. Um, a couple of months ago, um, I had a procedure, um, and the news that the doctor gave me, it wasn't so pleasant. Um, and my wife was started wearing, and um, I, I'm not claiming this for myself. I just thank God for the faith that I have in him. But I say, baby, don't you worry. That's right. Don't you worry because we don't know what God got in store. So I'm, if I'm not worried then don't you be worried. Well, I had a, a second procedure on Friday, and everything is good. Um, God is good. God is good. He is so good. And I, I, I thank him. This, the name of this song is called You Deserve It. You Deserve It. And we're going to try to sing that song. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I had a witness. You deserve it. Choir, help me sing. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Anybody want to worship him on today? Anybody want to worship him? My hallelujah belongs to you. Anybody know that the Lord deserves? Come on, y'all. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, I feel it in my heart. You Glory, all of 
you glory belongs to you. All of your glory, all of your glory belongs to you. All of your glory, all of your glory belongs to you. All of your glory, yeah. all of your glory belongs to you. Come on, give God some praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Lord, we honor you. You deserve it. You, you deserve it. Somebody give God some glory. You deserve it. He's worthy of our praise. You deserve it. He keep blessing us over and over and over you again. It. Come on, y'all. Everybody. Everybody sing hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Keep it right there. Hallelujah. Keep it right there. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning, y'all. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning, y'all. Hallelujah. All oh, your glory. All your glory. All oh, your honor. All the honor. All oh, your praise. All the praise. Hey. Oh, somebody bless the Lord. You deserve it. He's worthy of our praise, y'all. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. One more time. We ain't finished yet. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. All the honor, all the honor, all your praise. All the praise. You deserve it. Hallelujah, God. You deserve it. In spite of what you're going through, you deserve He deserves it. He deserves our love, y'all. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Give God some praise in this house. He deserve it. He deserve it, y'all. In spite of us, we don't deserve his love. We don't deserve his love, but he continued to bless us over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. Hallelujah, y'all. Hallelujah belongs to you hallelujah hallelujah yeah long to you oh hallelujah you deserve it you deserve it Yeah. You deserve that. 
Yeah. Give God some glory. Oh, we bless your name. You deserve it. Sing to the Lord, y'all. You, you deserve it. Don't worry about if somebody looking at you. Come on. You deserve it. He deserve it, y'all. You deserve it. You deserve it. Let's just hear them. Let me hear y'all. Anybody need a blessing? Anybody need a blessing? Just tell him hallelujah. Come on. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. 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 Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us. That's the old school in me. Again. Again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love. For Jesus. For Jesus, who died and has now gone above. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thine the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Do it one more time. Reverse. Hallelujah. As we said earlier, we spent, Lady and I spent all day at uh, 
Brother Charles' house as we sat with him as he just had to go through whatever amalgam of emotions mm -hmm. with the passing of his friend for 43 years. Right, right. And you, you can't take 43 years lightly. I'm sitting there thinking about how I had just got over 43 months with my wife. <laughs> Mama. And I had to think about there were times I didn't want to go home and watch this. There are times she didn't want me to come home. Well. But somehow, even if I had to sleep on a sofa, I was at home. <laughs> and so we celebrate him. And so um, while we had to just kind of go through all of that on last night, and I was able to, the Bible says, he who have friends must show himself friendly. And uh, so to that end, I was able to pick up the phone and call a friend last night. And he didn't have 13-day notice to get himself together. But the response I got from my friend, but I, I didn't have to give a reason why. He said, I'm already, I'm there, thank you. And so I thank God for my friend who on today is just going to bless us, uh, none other than the Reverend Dr. Marlon Haskell. Come on, come on. And uh, he's going to bless us in his own way. And he gave me an assignment. It's funny now, he's going to preach, but he get, told me what to do. So I got to read his scripture. So if you'll join me. <laughs> That's what light skinned friends do to you. So would That's you stand right. on your feet? Listen, the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 6, two. chapter 2. I want to see if you remember, chapter 2. <laughs> John chapter 2. Oh, wait a minute. Michael Jackson likes Elder Gloria. All right. I don't know what you're looking at. All right. John chapter 2 verse 1 reads on this wise, one of my favorite scriptures. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus said to his disciples who had been invited to the wedding, watch this, Sheila, when the wine was gone. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to them, there is no more snoop wine. Jesus said, woman, what do that got to do with me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Verse 6 says, nearby stood six stones, water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw me some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. The master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned to wine. Three people got happy right there. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside. He said, look here, bro. Everyone usually bring out the good stuff first. Then after they're drunk, they don't know any better, then comes the cheaper stuff. To shower then the guests who had too much to drink. Said, but you say the best. Watch yourself, watch yourself, PC. You say the best till now. Jesus said, Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The word of God. 
for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. May you remain standing as the man of God. Come declare the word of God that we may go out and show God. Will you receive none other than Reverend Dr. Marlon Haskell. Praise the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Um, you all may be seated. Okay. Don't be trying to push me already. <laughs> Look, it's a joy and an honor to, to be here by the invitation of my friend. Um, I love it when light-skinned folks can come together. <laughs> that, that, that's right. That's right. You know, we went out of style for a moment, but we back now. Right. And uh, so we, we praise God to be back at uh, New Kingdom um, in person and online. We praise God for you. Now, let me just go on and set the record straight. I don't mind being transparent with you all. Um, since Marvin already did it, being transparent, right? Um, the reason I gave your pastor an assignment, and I'm going to go on and confess, I'm fronting right now. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but the reason I gave your pastor the assignment to read the scripture. I didn't go old school. You know, back in the day in certain churches, they had somebody to read and then somebody started interpreting that. Right. Uh, that's what that reminds me of. But the reason I did that is to ask my friend to read it because I can't. Not that I don't know how to read, but because I just had recently had cataract surgery. And if anybody ever had cataract surgery, mm -hmm, it takes time for your eyes to adjust mm -hmm, to your surroundings. Everything looks brighter. Um, and, and then the glasses you walked in with before the cataract surgery no longer work for you, yeah. right? And, and so my light-skinned friend over here has been joking me and, and, and said, so I just called to check on you, bro. Can you see clearly now? <laughs> you know, because I, I was sharing with him from my heart, and I said, man, I, I went through this cataract surgery, and, 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 I, and things are hazy and bleary, and I feel like the blind man when Jesus healed him, and Jesus says, what do you see now? And he said, I see me in tallest trees. And, and so then Jesus had to give him a second touch. And, and so your profound and prolific pastor yesterday texted me and said, uh, can you see clearly now? Do you need another touch? A a amen. I, I praise God for him checking on me. And when I said I'm fronting, I can't read the, script, the scripture with these glasses, but I can see y'all. You know, but reading print is totally different. All right. And so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, in fact, we want to get into the word right now. And you say, well, why'd you bring that iPad up there? I'm not going to really read from it. It's just I'm used to it. I just wanted to deal with it from the front. It's like, wait a minute, he can't read it, but he bought something up there to read from. This is coming straight from the heart. I've, I've prepared, I've studied, but God's going to give the increase. Amen. A -a 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 so let's pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Our praise do belong to you because you are our all in all. We thank you for being God all by yourself. And we thank you for loving us enough, God, to call us into existence. Not only to call us into existence, God, but even to walk with us. And even call us into your service. We thank you now, God, for this time of communion and fellowship together. That we come now to hear a word from you. Use me, this earthen vessel. Allow me to decrease that you might increase. Speak to us, O oh God, that indeed we shall become better than what we are. We'll be able to see more than what we've seen, and we'll be able to do more than what we have done. In the name of Jesus, we give it all to you. Amen. Amen. As is customary, let me just go on and give you uh, the title of this sermon as, as we tell the tapestry of this particular text. It is found in the gospel according to John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The title of this sermon is, Just Do It. 
just do it. Like, do what? It comes from the focal verse of chapter 5. After it is that uh, Jesus' mother has made a request of him. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus put it in proper perspective. It's like, it's not my time. It's not time for me to show up and show out right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she did not prolong the conversation. She just turned to the disciples and says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I would simply say with emphasis, just do it. Mm -hmm. just, since your pastor read the scripture and put some ghettoism in there, <laughs> I, I, I figured I'd go right along and say, just do it. Right? Because that, that's what we say to folks when, you know, we get tired of fussing with them and trying to convince them. And we're just like, why don't you just do it? Right? Right? And, and so what John does, John, this is the only gospel that has this account about the wedding at Canaan. John is different from the other three gospels, Matthew, Mark. And, and there you go. Look, mm -hmm, I, I know your pastor's doing some teaching over here. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all look at Jesus from a similar perspective. One of the writers, Matthew particularly, looks at Jesus from the human perspective as king of the Jews. You know, uh, Mark, Mark, Mark and Luke look at him from the human perspective also as a suffering servant and, and the son of man. But John, mm -hmm, he takes a different and weightier perspective on who Jesus is. He looks at Jesus not from the human perspective, but from the divine perspective. Translated, he, he no longer sees Jesus as a man, as a king, a suffering servant, the son of man. He denotes, he declares that Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so this is my favorite gospel writer because he elevates Jesus to another perspective that's out of this world. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he declares in a sense that this is his world because in the prologue of chapter one, he says in the beginning was the word and, and, and the word was God and the word was with God. Uh -huh. And he says everything that was made was made by him and not anything that was made uh, was not made. And, and so he simply says, put it in proper perspective. This is who Jesus is. And what I've come to let us know today and be reminded, even myself and your pastor, is to let you know that a lot of us, lots of times, we come to church because we are professional church goers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we've been doing for days on end, for days, weeks, and months. And, and this is what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and, and so the fact is, uh, we don't really expect for God to do anything different than what he did last week. Because we got this. We're going to come sing and shout. Flip over some chairs, mm -hmm, give, lift up our hands in the sanctuary, and we think we have done God some service. But I've come to remind myself and your pastor, and the reason I keep emphasizing your pastor is because sometimes preachers, we get comfortable with God. And if we get comfortable with God, the people get comfortable with God. Mm -hmm. we, we're always looking for something greater than we've already experienced. Uh huh. It's not enough that God has already done something and made a way for us, but we want to be like Janet Sack Jackson and say, "What have you done for me?" Mm hmm. But 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 the reality is is that Jesus is about to drop a bombshell on us in this particular text, and and I want you to see it right here because he has been invited woo, to a wedding at Canaan. And one thing that I want to elevate right here uh, is, is that this does two things for me. Number one, it lets me know that Jesus honors the institution of marriage. <sighs> not shacking up. Not ducking and dodging. Not slipping and hiding, but the institution of marriage. Not being engaged for two or three years, but the institution of marriage. Not common law marriage. But the institution of marriage has been ordained by God, which means it glorifies God and not yourself. <sighs> there are some people, point number two that I see here, not only does Jesus honor the marriage itself, but he also celebrates marriage. Not only does he celebrate marriage, but this signifies that he enjoys celebrating things in life. Okay. 
you're not with me. There are some people who call themselves Christians who don't believe you should celebrate anything. But, but, but I, I'm going Bible on them and say, well, wait a minute now. I see Jesus, who is my Lord and Savior, at a wedding, and they're about to celebrate. And we know they're about to turn up. And I know why this is your pastor's favorite scripture. Uh-huh. He, he, did you see what he was about to shout when he read that four-letter word? Something had run out at the wedding feast. Something rained out at the cookout. Something rained out of the house party. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know when certain things run out, then it's going <laughs> to... The chicken can run out. The potato salad can run out. But you better not run out of wine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the party's over. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You've been to some parties. You may have been there last week. And, and when it rained out, you tipped out. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got a phone call. No, you, you, you left because you know the wine had ran out. Can I be real with you? I, I know we all take a little sip every now and again. And I'm not talking about water. Right, right. You all try to close it and close it by saying, well, you not have a little drink or wine when I have my dinner. Well, you must eat a lot of dinner all day. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And, and I'm just come here to tell you, ain't nothing wrong. Whip a little sip every now and again. I know I'm getting in trouble, but I've come to shame the devil. The Bible does not condemn drinking. It condemns drunkenness. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not trying to encourage anybody to start drinking if you don't already drink, but if you do, that's okay, boo. Because I see here that Jesus turned H2O into some Merlot. Oh, I had to come down your street. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. he, 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 he took that H2O and turned it into some Chardonnay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I may not have hit your flavor, but you get the point. Right, right. I, I'm, I'm not talking about Mad Dog. I ain't talking about Arbor Miss. I'm talking about real wine. So how did that happen? Since, since Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding feast, they were there. And, and the issue is, is that if the wine ran out, then it was going to be a problem for the guest, for the bridegroom. Because you have to remember in the Jewish culture, you're supposed to have some when you marry somebody. Uh -huh. And wedding feasts went on for at least seven days. And, and that's why John says on the third day. Now, now it's supposed to last for seven days, but here we at the third day, and the wine is already about to run out. Now, you might speculate, well, why was the wine about to run out? Did they buy enough? Did they have enough? Or maybe there was somebody drinking more than they needed to drink. The scripture does not tell us why, but the fact is there was an issue that came up. And, and here's what I like about the text, and I hope you like it too, is that every now and again, there are situations that arise in our lives, seen and unseen dangers that we are not prepared for. We didn't anticipate. We don't want it to happen, but I'm so glad that even when I don't call on the name of Jesus, he always shows up and shows up. Y'all don't get that. Nowhere in the text does it say that the, that the bridegroom or the master of the feast came to Jesus with the concern that the wine was about to run out. Mm -hmm. and, and so here's the thing for you. Every now and again, even when you don't call on the name of the Lord, there is somebody else that's calling on the Lord on your behalf. <laughs> somebody
somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took a little time and prayed for me. And so I come by to remind us is that every so often, God does not always move the same way at the same time. Some people say you got to call on him for him to provide for you. No, you don't. Sometimes he just does what he wants to do because he wants to do it for you. I'm so glad that, that every now and again that, that God has kept me from some stuff that I didn't know what was about to happen to me. But when I look back over my life, I can truly say I've been blessed. Is there anybody in the house today that said, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. I shouldn't be here, but God has kept me. Have you ever been in a, a tight situation mm -hmm, and you thought you won't come make it and all you was doing was pulling out your hair, drinking too much wine, smoking too much coke, sniffing too much dope, but yet God says, I got this for you. You didn't ask for it, but I'm looking out for you. And so I'm stepping in huh, and helping you deal with this situation. So it is that at the wedding feast, the mother of Jesus approached him and said, they're running low on wine. She didn't ask him to do anything about it. She just brought it to his attention. But here's the good thing that I know. Is that I only talk to folk that I know can help me. Mm -hmm. And so when I got an issue, when, 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 I, when I have a medical issue, I go talk to the doctor. I don't have to ask him to heal me. I show up because I know that you know what to do. Mm -hmm. when, 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 when things go wrong in the house and I talk to my wife I, I, don't, I don't talk to my friends I talk to my wife because if the issue's in the house my wife is the only one who can do something about it and, and so in this particular pericope we find out that Mary the mother of Jesus even though she's not called by name but just simply his mother she goes and presents the issue to him and says they're about to run out Jesus says what do I have to do with that? In, in essence, this is not my party. This ain't my shing ding. That's not my issue. And he simply said, now is not the time for me to demonstrate my powers and who I am. And so she got the picture and she left it alone. But here's the thing that God wants me to understand and you to understand, Pastor, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. it, it is that as oftentimes as we call on the name of the Lord and want him to bless us, Sometimes you got to realize that you may not be blessed by the Lord, but you might need to be used by the Lord. What? See, that's the problem in the church today. Everybody want to run to the church for a handout. Lord, bless me. Make a way. Give me a breakthrough, a breakout, a hand up, hand out. Well, it's time for that devilish gospel to be eliminated and for us to get back to the real point of following the Lord and that is to be his hands and his feet and let God use us to be a blessing to somebody else uh-huh he, he, he doesn't care how much you come in here sing and shout and lift up your holy hands but he wants to know are you available for me to use you uh, are you available for me to call your name off the sideline uh, and go on and get some business done well why do you say that preacher because Jesus then turns uh, to the boys we don't know if all 12 were there or if it was just the four that, that he called out in the first chapter. But we know that Andrew was there. We know that Simon Peter was there. We know that Philip was there. We know that Nathaniel was there. That's in chapter 1. Here's the thing. Most people in church think that the work has to be done all by the pastor. Woo! Mm -hmm. but, but I know at New Kingdom, you all have been taught otherwise. Uh, because the pastor says, I will participate. But I need you to come go with me. And the reason I know that is because I follow y'all on Facebook, Pastor. And, 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 and when you post, I see where you in the kitchen cooking and some members are cooking. And you're about to say, we're about to hit the street because some people mm -hmm, may not have anything to eat tonight. Some people might need this. And so on a Friday night, uh, we're getting out here and taking some food to the streets. We're going to hit it and be a blessing to somebody else. And so the thing is, you don't always need to, to do something super or something big. You just need to do something that the Lord tells you to do. Let me make it plain for you. Jesus just simply turns to the disciples and, and just simply says, 
You see those water parts over there, six of them, about 20 to 30 gallons? Fill them with some water. Now, to me, if I was there, I would be wondering why. What are we going to put water in there for? We heard somebody say that the wine had run out. What you going to do with water in these stone pots? It doesn't make sense to me. I ain't never seen nobody do nothing like this before. What you going to do? Give them some water? They didn't do that. But had that been some of us, that's exactly what we'd be doing. Girl! You, did you hear him? Told us to put water in the pots. But they need some wine. But he wants to put water in it? Doesn't make sense. Here's my point. When God tells you to do something, it's not your job to understand why he needs you to do it or what he's going to do with it or how it's going to turn out. My job is to just do what the Lord says do. It doesn't need to make sense to nobody because God didn't give the vision to nobody. He gave it to you. You don't have to turn to your neighbor and say, do you think I ought to do that? No, because it comes from the Lord. You need to hear from the Lord for yourself. And when God tells you to do something, Pastor, whether it's been done before, whether it makes sense, whether you think people are going to laugh at you, you need to just do it. Okay, let me move on so you'll see this point. When they then put the water in the pots, Jesus then said, okay, now, Fill it to the brim. They filled it to the brim. And that's, a, that's something to let me know something great is about to happen. Because you know when you got something good, you know it's good, and you pouring it into your cup, I mean your glass. Yeah, yeah, you know those solo cups? Those red, those red ones. Yeah, yeah. When, when you know you're about to get some good stuff, now, I've seen it. I don't know personally, but I've seen it. People just don't put a little bit in it. They don't just put it halfway in it. Marvin, they put it all the way in until it's about to overflow. Uh, because they say, uh, this is just for me and no more. A amen. I'm filling it to the brim. So here's the punchline. Is that when they filled it to the brim, you knew that Jesus was about to do something very magical, very miraculous, because they filled it to the brim. The fact is, after they had put the water in it, Jesus says, now dip it and take that to the master servant. Doesn't make sense, Pastor. Why am I taking this stuff, this water that I know I put in the pot, and taking it to somebody else? It's just water. Which you don't understand when God wants to use you. God's going to make the change while you've been obedient to him. You, uh huh. And that is you have not seen him change the water into nothing. But on your faith on what he said and being obedient to him, I'm going to do just what he says. And the fact is, I want you to understand that when you take what Jesus told you to do. You just need to stand back and watch God work. You need to stand back and see God give the increase. You just need to be faithful. You need to be obedient. You need to be expecting. And then you can praise God. Because you don't praise God for what he has done. You can praise God because he had other options. But he decided to call you. He decided to use you. With all of your issues, all of your hang-ups, all of your faults, your felonies, your misdemeanors, your drug addictions, he decided to use you. Oh, okay, y'all acting funny in here. Man, let me talk to the people on live. You, 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 you know you've been some places and done some things that, that folks want to hold against you, but guess what? God doesn't care. God, God can use anybody. He will use anybody. Can I tell you? I know what I'm talking about because he uses me, and I've done some things. I've said some things. Uh-huh. Anybody can testify in here? Man, I know what you mean. That was me. You, I, I, I used to be, I used to be different than what you see today. You, you didn't want to mess with this. You didn't want to touch this because I, mama used to say I would cut you from short to, oh. I'll bust a cap. Oh, see, see, see. You got some of those folks up in here. A a amen. I know it's not you, but it's somebody in here beside you. And all my point is, it does not matter where you've been, where you come from, God can use you. Not only can he, but he will use you. 
And so let me hurry on before I take too much time. And so when Jesus told him to take it to the master servant, he, the servant says, oh my God, whoa, this is the best thing that I've ever tasted. What did I tell you? When Jesus steps in and shows up and shows out, he will do things that nobody expected. It will give you the very best that he's got. He will give you something that nobody else can give you. I come to tell you, when you work with my Jesus, he will do the impossible. He will do the unthinkable. He will do the unlikely. But all you got to do is say, Lord, if you need anybody to pour some water in the pot, here am I, Lord, use me. Lord, if you need anybody to participate in your wonderful miracle working power, I'm right here. I don't know why you're sending me down to your road. I don't know why you're sending me into the into the ghetto, but God, I'm going because you told me to go. I don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and who you're going to do it for, but I'm going because you told me to go. I don't know when, where, or how, but I just want God to use me. Is there anybody in the house today that it ain't always about me, but it is about God using me for his glory? And so I've come by to say, just let God use you. Declare today, it ain't about blessings from heaven. It ain't about getting a new car. It ain't about getting a new job. It ain't about getting a new spouse. But it is about God getting the increase. It is for God to use you. When the Lord needs somebody, he wants to call your name. He wants to call your number. And I've come by to let you know that God says, just do it. Here's the thing. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching football, the wild card, and, and my team was so kind and gracious to allow the 49ers to win and move on to the next round. Right, right, right. And, 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 and so since they were kind and gracious, uh, I just come by. The, since my team wasn't moving on, then I started rooting for the other team. Huh? And so I've just come to say, sometimes you need to root for somebody else. Huh? And don't always root and count on yourself. Huh? you got to learn how to push somebody else. Huh? you got to learn to help somebody else. Huh? you got to learn how to pray for somebody else. Huh? You need to do something for somebody else huh? and let God get the glory. And so the man says, this is good. All I come by to let you know is my brothers and sisters, just something simple as this and those online is that you don't need to see anything miraculous because you saw a miracle this morning when he woke you up this morning. Yeah, that, that was a miracle. I, I, I know he may have done it a, a few days before, but he did it this morning. He didn't have to let you live, but he did. The other miracle is you're still alive. Breath still running through your body. Blood still running through your veins. That's a miracle because only God can make that happen. I've come to let you know you don't need to see something really profound. You just need to know that God has already created a miracle in your life when he made you. And when he woke you up and started you on your way. And so the fact of the matter is God says just do it. I'm going to end this thing in a few moments and just simply say that the fact is that God is still on the main line. You can call him up and tell him what you want, but you got to say, Lord, when you're ready to move, can you use me? I've seen you do it through somebody else, and I want you to do it through me. Lord, I've seen the things that you've done, and I want to participate in what you're doing. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to be your voice. If I can help somebody as I travel along the way, then my living should not be in vain. But I've come by to let us know it ain't over, baby. God still got some work for you to do. New kingdom, God still things for you to do. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither is entered into the heart of man what God has in store. You got to break down some barriers, Pastor. Y'all got to break down some things so folks can say, wow, look what God is doing over there at New Kingdom on Deer Road. We've never seen anything like that. I want to be a part of it. And so I've come by to encourage your hearts today. You keep on rejoicing in the Lord because when you're happy and you know it, you'll be ready to serve the Lord with gladness. I've come to let you know uh, that this is a day that the Lord have made. Uh, is anybody glad and going to rejoice in it? Uh, as I rejoice, uh, I want God to use me uh, anywhere, anytime. Uh, God, use me for your glory. Uh, use me for your service. Uh, I'll obey and I will go all the way. That's why you can have an international ministry, New Kingdom. 
because you've allowed the Lord to, to, to do things that you have never thought before. And that's why when I talk to your pastor and I'm done, I said, man, are you in Virginia today? He said, man, you got jokes. I said, no, you're the one that's got the international ministry. I, I just want to know, have you flown somewhere? Have you gone to the West Coast? Have you gone to Pakistan? I just want to know what is God doing in your life? Because I know that the Lord is using him. And he can only use him because he's using new kingdom. And as he used PC, he's going to use new kingdom to make a difference in somebody else's life. To make a difference in the world, to reclaim backsliders, to save sinners. Amen. And so we got some work to do. Because after God blesses us, after we worship, he wants us to work. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so today, God says through Jesus, just, 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 whatever it is. Don't need to know how, when, where. Just go on and do it and watch God get the glory. You're going to be blessed because you've been obedient. You're going to be blessed because God chose you. When he don't call your name and he'll call somebody else, you don't have to be sitting on the sidelines and say, God, I would have done that, but you didn't. And can I tell you, if you don't do it, God will find somebody else. But I want to encourage myself and pastor and all of you, don't deny the work that God is putting in your hands. Don't deny the assignment he's putting in your heart. Don't deny the task that he has put in your hands. Just say, Lord, use me. I'm available to you. I may not be qualified, but you're going to qualify me. People may not think I can do it, but you know I can do it. So if the Lord needs somebody, hmm, that's me. Can you do that? Point to yourself. If the Lord needs somebody, it's me. It's me before the pastor even asks me. It's me. Mm -hmm. Before he asks for volunteers, just say, it's me, pastor. And maybe sometimes you have to go to pastor and say, pastor, this is what the Lord laid on my heart. This is what he wants me to do. And then you will pray about it. And then maybe the Lord will speak to him, and that's exactly what needs to be done. So I'm just trying to tell you that it's not all about shouting, singing and shouting. But it's also about doing the work of ministry. And most people don't want to do the work of ministry. They just want to come in and sing and shout and have a weekend rendezvous with God. They, they, they want to treat God like a friend with benefits. But God says, I'm calling you to service. I'm calling you to believe in me, to follow me, and be obedient to my call in your life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus... We submit ourselves to you afresh. Thank you, God, for this convicting word, for this releasing word. Somebody's been struggling about what you want us to do. But today, God, we hear you clearly say, just do it. When we are convinced that as you speaking, God, all we got to do is we don't need to look for another confirmation. We just need to step out on faith and do what you've assigned us to do. We, we don't need nobody to applaud us. We don't need nobody to, to thank us. We don't need anybody to pump us up, put us on a pedestal. We just want to be used. We declare today that all that I have, all that I am, I'm completely yours. And use me for your service. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's praise God by the clapping of your hands. Come on, somebody just shout, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. With that, did God not use Reverend Dr. Marlon Haskell? Use me, Lord, here am my... I. Listen, just, just, just do it. Whatever it is that God is asking you, whatever it is that God is impressing upon you, whatever God is pushing you to do, just... 
just do it just do it because at the end of the day as he echoed our words God has other options no, don't don't think that he has all his chips on you if that was the case, if God had all his chips on some of us, he'd be broke. Because we only want to do it when it's convenient. We only want to do it when we feel convicted. But no, God, I, we ask that you use us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word today. Father, we thank you for your vessel. We pray now, God, that you restore and replenish the man of God. Thank you, God, that whatever it is on his list, we touch and agree today and we declare that it is so. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray before the month is out that as he declared the word, God, that we declare that something big happened in his life. I pray, God, that you bless him and his wife from the bedroom to the bank account. Do it for them, God. In Jesus' name. Somebody tell him, Pastor, tell, tell Pastor Haskell, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Come on and put your hands together. Yes. And, and you know, we, we've gotten a few texts, and so we're going to say for those who are asking, to be a part of the kingdom church next month. We don't open our church up all the, all the time. We kind of kind of date us, flirt with us a little bit. Kind of kind of hang out with us. You know, you know, you know how you dated Ray Ray and Boo. Come on, give us a little time. You can you can flirt with us. Just kind of smell us out, see if this is where you want to be. And next month we're opening the doors. We're not big on increasing the numbers, but most important, strengthening our members. Making sure that we are strong around here. We just, we're just the Gideon 300. I'll tell you more about that next month. We're just the Gideon. 300. We don't need a whole lot, just a few who's ready to just do it. To that end, we do want to, before we add to the church, we want to add to the bite of Christ. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus today at home, while you are preparing your breakfast, you can just do it. You can get to know Jesus today. Don't, don't, don't be arrogant to think I got tomorrow because he's always giving you tomorrow. No, no, do it today. Do it today. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. L listen, people are dying not only just from COVID. There is from cancer, car accidents, carelessness, and Christ will. Listen, don't, 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 don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. If you don't know Jesus and you want to get to know Jesus, if you're online, whatever instructions they're giving you, listen, just say, just type me or whatever they ask you to do. If you don't know Jesus, you just type me. If you're in the building, you want to get to know Jesus, look, at, slip up your hand. Don't, don't worry about who's watching you because at the end of the day, you got to stand before him yourself. You, you, you have to respond because, listen, even if you do die with somebody, you still got to respond to Jesus for yourself. So get, get, make that decision today. If you're here, you want to slip up your hand? You want to slip up your hand? Get, you want, hey, I want to make sure that this is my relationship with Jesus Christ. For that person who's responding later, if you responded online now, let us pray with them. If you would join us in prayer, let's stand up and pray with that person. The Bible declares that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one. And surely if heaven is rejoicing, we ought to rejoice here on earth. So for that person, come on, would you clap your hands for that person? Yes, as we celebrate them, Father, we pray that they declare that they are a sinner. They declare they know they are. But Father, we declare that today we confess our sins to you. We confess our sins unto you, and we know according to your word, you said that you are waiting to forgive us. So, Father, on this day, we pray, God, that you come into their life. Come into their life and forgive of our sins. And you say, God, we just confess you before men. And, God, you said if you, we're ashamed of you, you'll be ashamed of us before our Father. It's as simple as I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of our life. And we believe that you died on the cross for us. And according to your word, that you are coming back for us. And with that, we declare, 
with that simple but yet powerful prayer, we declare that we are saved. We are born again, and on this day, we celebrate new life in you, Jesus Christ. So as you prayed that prayer, so we had to just, just do it. Just, just walk that walk of faith. And if you've prayed that prayer, let us know that we can walk alongside you. And you, you don't have to be a member here, but please continue that walk up anywhere. There, there, there's one thing that this city is not lacking. They're not lacking churches. And, and, and one thing about Christ, there are no homeless children. All of his children should find a home. You should find a home. And so make that happen. Just do it. And to that point, guys, it's offering time. It's time to come on. Just do it. There are a couple ways to give. There are a couple ways to give. You got the cash app. You got the Givelify. And if you need an envelope, just slip up your hand and our staff, our team will be happy to assist you. You can be seated. You can be seated. You can be seated. Just slip up your hand. Good to see you, Linwood. Linwood say, give him four. Give, give Linwood like four over here. Amen, 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 amen. It is giving time. It's giving time online. Come on, come on. We celebrate that seed that you're giving online. Thank you. Yeah, everybody, Thank you. come get your bounce on. Get your bounce yes, on. Get your bounce yes. on. some men on Friday nights. We need some men, that's all I'm going to say, uh, who will come help us. And uh, thank you for those who are giving scarves. Thank you for those who are giving hats, gloves. Every weekend we run out. We, and that there's a need, so we, we took coats this time. And it's amazing to think that in the snow, that there are people walking around with no coats on. In the snow, that people who walk around with no coats on, they come out with flip-flops on. And I'm just wondering, how, how is this possible? The, the, the thing that we have a plethora of in our homes, the thing that you can kind of go to your cloak closet and see which coat I want to wear, they don't have that choice. And so, will you help us to continue to make, uh, to make it possible so that they can have a choice? Will you do help us do that? Thank you for those who are continuing to give. And so we ask this week if you would bring uh, the scarves, or, you know, whatever that is you want to bring, the hats, the gloves, bring it by this week so that we can continue to help the least of loss and the left out. Thank you for those who are continuing to do so. We, we are enjoying it. We, we, I, even in the snow, we are out there. We, and I, will you help me thank God for our volunteers who come out every Friday? Come on, come on, come on. Thank God for them. Man, I, I, I be trying to give them a way out. Honestly, I do. I do. I be like, y'all, it's snowing out there. You know, kind of planting the seed. And then when they give you your words back, Pastor, you said we don't make excuses, we make adjustments. I said, yeah, take it. So we're going out there. Yeah, we're going out there and uh, let the Lord use us. But we are so glad that we get to serve. We are so glad that we get to do so, uh, that we go and give soup, scarves, gloves, all of that. And so we thank God. And so thank you. Did we give, y'all can do the offering yet? Anybody? Okay. Come on, come on. Let's get an offering. Come on, let's give an offering. Let's give, let's give. They already gave? I'm, I was talking. I ain't see it. Okay. This side wanted to wait. Come on, come on. Let's, let's make sure then we get like four of them over there.
opportunity to give a small portion of what you've given unto us. I pray, God, that you bless, God, that you bless according to your word. As they plant seed in the ground, I pray, God, that it grows in their life. I pray, God, that you meet them at their greatest need. God, you see the seed. God, you know what they gave you. God, you, you bless them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never, ever your presence, you go with us. You be for us. You protect us. Lead and guide us as we go and just do it. Thank you, God, for filling our personal cups. Fill it to the tops till we want no more. Thank you, God, for the miracle you performed in our lives. Thank you, God, for what you've produced in our lives, not for us. Thank you for enlarging our territory, but help us not to be territorial over that which you've given us, that we can be a blessing to the least of the lost and the left out. We are blessed to be a blessing. As we leave this place, we go magnify you, make you visible to people who can't see you in the natural eye. We love you. We appreciate you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout, just do it. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I 